If you haven't watched part 1 to 3, I will link them in my video description. I want to thank you all for the support you have given me. I do try and read through comments, but it is harder for me to get to them all now. Recently, there has been a higher than usual request in my comments for me to do similar content as Ellie on this monkey. I'd prefer not to say their name. However, this channel has a long history and from my understanding, a lot of monkeys are involved. I never watched pet monkey channels so I would have to do the research into everything. Please understand that I have been working on this Ellie research for many months now and I feel like I have barely scratched the surface. Please understand that I wouldn't have known as much as I do about Ellie and her history if it wasn't for the help I received. I would love to deep dive into every pet channel. But it's just not as easy as you would think. I do believe that everything that has happened with Ellie and those associated is a good example of the pet monkey scams happening on YouTube and throughout other social media platforms. Ellie's story is a good representation of the kinds of manipulation and abuse that most pet channels use to exploit these animals. Ellie's story, and others associated with her, is sufficient enough to caution people from donating, watching, and unintentionally supporting animal abuse. There's no promise here, but maybe one day I can just do a reaction with commentary on a few things related to this monkey in the future. However, I will not be able to do such a deep dive with this particular monkey or channel, because there is just too much history and research needed. I am not editing this video in one sitting. As it takes me hours to edit and make just a 10, 15, or 20 minute video. During the creation of this video, I realized I forgot something that I should have put in part 3. So I will just run my thoughts on this briefly. In part 1, I mentioned that I believed some of the gifts he was sending to himself, rather than getting them from fans. I believe some fans sent gifts. But in his earliest videos of him opening shipments from so-called fans, I truly believe he was packaging things he bought and opened them on camera in order to encourage others to send gifts. I believed this even before I noticed this detail that I am going to show you, as I had only found this as I was making part 3. Now, I can't confirm this because they deleted all their videos but I'm pretty sure that this was one of the first or earliest unboxing videos. If you compare this shipment from the one I show in part 1, you will see two very significant differences. One is that he's not surprised by anything in the box and he's barely taking the time to look at the products and the other difference is that the products are in Vietnamese. This guy is a bad actor. If this whole thing wasn't tragic, it would probably be funny. Also, later he puts a tablecloth on this table, but if you look at this table and the one behind him, they both look like workbenches. It is my opinion that this house really isn't being used as his home. It's either a seasonal home for farming, a second home owned by family, or has some other purpose. There's very little belongings. I think in this video clip, it's the most belongings I have ever seen. I've noticed that some of these pet monkey scammers are using homes that aren't their own, or use homes they're renovating in order to film these animals and to possibly avoid being tracked down by the authorities for illegally keeping these animals. I have been specifically noticing this in the Vietnam Pet Monkey channels. And like always, the performative music is in this video, so yet again I must mute it. I don't know about you, but that music makes me sick. It's so phony. They all use it. It's very much like music for a toddler and most of the time it doesn't fit the scenario of the video. They play it to perceive these animals as human children and them as the caring parent. A delusion that sadly too many people fall for. Side note, this poor girl looks like Waldo in a dress. I can't stress this enough. Forcing these animals to stand is cruel. But forcing them to stand as well as wearing diapers is far more painful for them. They have taken x-rays of young non-human primates raised with and without diapers that shows for a fact that diapers permanently deforms their hips. These animals can live anywhere between 20 to 40 years old depending on the species of primate. I hate to think how their hips will feel if they make it to a ripe old age. Diapers either for a human or dog are not designed for monkeys. Too often, they are punished for not standing and walking. There's only one species of non-human primate whose body has adapted to walk on two feet for an extended amount of time. And that is the snubbed nose monkey. This is to walk on snow and reserve energy as there is only a scarce supply of food in the winter. 
we hardly ever see the cruel tactics they use to train them to stand and walk on two feet. At a later date, I will show just how cruel some people will go to force these animals to do this. I couldn't find a single video of him giving her Pedialyte. Was it really for her? I'm not saying a video of him giving her this didn't exist, but I didn't find one. I can't recall, but I think this is the second unboxing with some form of Pedialyte. We'll see these performative headache fever things being used on Ellie later. Of course he needed to stock up for what's to come next. But as you can see, he knew exactly what those things were used for and instantly assumed they're for Ellie. He himself played sick for the camera before, why not assume they're for him or Ellie when there's no note? It's an extremely odd thing to send, with no explanation and when Ellie is clearly healthy here. The Aquafina box is a choice. It's barely taped up and super easy to open. It just doesn't appear like it's been through the post and again no note. Nor does he give a thank you to the person or people who supposedly sent these items. And really, who is going to spend the postage to send something as cheap as rice and give that heavy bag of rice, so little tape? When I first saw this, I knew people would think I was speculating too much even though I think I'm pointing out things that are common sense and obvious. I never thought I would come across any more evidence outside of common sense that would prove this speculation. But I like to believe that Ellie wanted us to know that she was very familiar with this particular item that I am about to show. This is what I forgot in part 3. This was in the same video where he said people were arguing about Ellie wearing clothes. He really roped people in with donations this way by making those who comment feel like they are in some way involved in helping Ellie. But as I have shown and you will continue to see, there was many bad things he was hiding from people. For those that need translation, he says, my brother said, if there is anything wrong please comment and object. My brothers will do good things to get rid of bad things. Now, it's not just this quote that I want you to see, it's actually the object in the background. By the way I do have the footage of this video, it's just quicker editing to show screenshots. If you ask me, I would say that's packing tape and it even appears like Ellie thought she was being called to hand it to him. This video is roughly around the same time period as the previous video I showed you with the rice. Now moving on. Here he is about to clean Ellie's ears. This is completely performative and dangerous. Only professionals with experience should clean an animal's ears. If done improperly, this could cause a rupture to the eardrum. For those who need translation, he says, I went out today and bought Ellie physiological saline. That makes no sense and I have no clue if this is due to poor translation or he's using big words he doesn't know. Physiological responses are for example, you see something scary and your heart beats fast. The heart beating fast is a physiological response, it's involuntary. So I have no idea what he means by this. But now I question what kind of med is he looking to give a physiological response to Ellie. Was that a slip up? I don't know. As you saw in part 3, there are things he's given to her that would give a physiological response for sure. He continues by saying, but that's all, so I use coarse salt and warm water for now. So now he's saying he didn't buy it and is making his own. He says, I will mix it with water and wipe it clean Ellie's ears. He says, I will use a sufficient amount of salt to avoid facial and excess. The performative broken English is pissing me off. There's a common theme with him. He'll at one point use perfect English, but when he wants to manipulate people he starts using fake broken English. He says, Ellie eats salt like that, it's so salty. If I used my actual voice instead of this speech to text, you would be hearing me say all kinds of profanity. Monkey Pet Channels really brings out a disgusted rage within me. He lets her eat salt and finds it funny. Just give me serenity now, please. Her ears look clean to me and there's nothing even on the cotton swab. So he just decided on risking rupturing her eardrum for a damn video. I find this next thing completely suspicious. Up to this point Ellie was fairly cooperative but she was getting very agitated and turning her head so he couldn't get to her ear. 
There's a cut in the video where we then see Ellie licking her hand and then suddenly becomes extremely tired. This isn't the first time I've showed him giving some kind of treatment or home care where she is unusually sleepy. I find the timing of that cut in the video, to her then licking her hand, as not a coincidence. I believe they put something on her hand to lick off. Something to make her sleepy, in my opinion. You will see my cut first and then theirs. Tell me your opinion, is this or is this not, at very least suspicious. Here you see Ellie clearly agitated. Suddenly she drops like she will fall asleep but can't because of what he's doing to her. At this time in his video, he's been cleaning that one ear for 5 minutes. If you don't know, a video must be 8 minutes or longer to be monetized. He spent the full 8 minutes doing this. 8 minutes to clean ears that aren't dirty. There's literally nothing on that cotton swab. If you can't believe that this is a performance, how much more proof do you need? She's not refusing the cotton swab to her ear like she was before. There's no way it's relaxing to her so much she would sleep. I've never seen an animal sleep while getting their ears cleaned. Would you be able to fall asleep to someone cleaning your ears? Another cut they made in the video and it appears they gave her another dose. Notice her pupils are now smaller. She licks her hand again. The title of this video was, A Sign to Know That Your Baby Monkey Is Hungry. So he self-admitted that he didn't know what he was doing to care for monkeys and was then choosing to school his audience. To him I'd like to say, here's a sign your baby monkey hates you. Because frankly, putting floating hearts in your video, doesn't cover up the fact that she's scared, and would rather not be bothered by you. That's all I learned from this video. I will leave in a snippet of the performative music just so you can hear Ellie and see how much of a performance this is. For comparison, I'm going to show it without the music. This way you focus on facial expressions rather than sound. Okay. You may know that baby monkeys love to be held. So why is Ellie trying so hard to escape, that she's even willing to climb on his head to get away? When she can't get away she fearfully submits. Stump-tailed macaques will do what is called teeth chattering. This along with the flicking of the tongue and lip smacking that is seen more frequently in other macaques are all signs of submission. It's a common gesture to bring peace to a tense social situation. Bearing all teeth, that resembles a smile, and sometimes some macaques will even appear like they're chuckling, is a fearful expression. Another submissive expression, is looking away from those they are seeing as the dominant one, by not making eye contact. In which, we also see Ellie do when she finally submits and decides to cling. Macaque social structure is all based on submission and dominance. It doesn't matter if they live in the wild or raised as a pet, hierarchical roles is important to their survival. It's in their nature to form an hierarchy and is not something that will just disappear from being held in captivity. As these primates get older, they can see their captors as dominant, but other humans associated with the owner, or strangers, they may want to dominate. These animals can also try to dominate their owners resulting to aggressive behaviors or even an attack on a person. Abuse, neglect, and improper care also can cause these animals to act abnormal and more erratic. With the wrong people, you can imagine where this could lead to the abuse or neglect or you can see why owners are wanting to give them up. 
Keeping a high-maintenance animal for 20 or more years takes a lot of commitment and most captors face difficulties with these animals after they're mature or as they mature. In macaques specifically they become more difficult to manage around the age of 3 to 4 years old. Often these pet monkey exploiters will get another baby monkey and replace them with a younger one. Some will even wait to get off the radar of viewers and later make a new channel with the new baby monkey. Who knows exactly what happens to the pet monkey prior, because often they won't say anything. If they do, they lie. Despite how cruel social media loves to portray macaque mothers as evil, life with their mother is needed. The truth is, living in the wild is not bliss, it's not all peaches and cream, it's not always pretty and nice. But, medical and behavior studies have been conducted for decades on these animals, and have determined that they're not fit for an everyday household. That they cannot be fully domesticated, and have a more fulfilling and healthier life in the wild, as there are many things that affect their quality of life while in captivity. Non-human primates have natural instincts, natural wants and needs that we as humans are incapable of changing or replacing. Even people who know how to properly care for these animals have a hard time keeping them fully happy and healthy as it is no easy task. This next video clip pissed me off. One tactic these animal exploiters like to do is exaggerate in their video titles. This next one was named, Dad Urgently Warms Poor Ellie Monkey. I spat out so many names when I saw this video. It's so ridiculous and exploitive. You would think with a title like that, that something serious happened to Ellie that would have caused her to be cold. Lies. He gave her a bath. But blames the weather. He knows she's cold, yet spends half the time, showing her shivering rather than said, urgently warms her up. After a title like that, we'll watch him pretend like he cares, while doing the exact opposite from caring. He says, I found the weather quite nice and sunny today so I showered Ellie but unexpectedly this makes Ellie feel cold despite bathing with warm water. Again, I must point out how good his English is here. He continues to say, I gave Ellie a quick bath. I'll turn on the heating bulb for Ellie. So rather than keeping her covered with the towel, he leaves it off of her. They really zoom in to get that shot of her shivering. Something tells me they enjoy seeing her in this state. Does this look like he's really trying to warm her up? I wouldn't put it past him for actually putting her in a cold bath, but with also ice cubes, just for this damn video. The lengths these exploiters will go to manipulate people for donations and views is really limitless. The fact that he made sure to say he gave her a warm bath, makes me believe that he in fact did the opposite. He's shown her being bathed inside and outside before. But he never mentions exactly where he bathed her. I just don't believe he'd go through the trouble to bathe her outside without recording it. Again with the constant touching. Because if he keeps touching her it means he cares, right? But doesn't care enough to use the towel he has perfectly placed on his lap. He says, this milk is so hot Ellie. Then he's doing the motions to warm the bottle rather than cool it down. What a lying fucking dingbat. Then says, wait a minute I'll warm it up a bit. Then back to, it's hot Ellie, be patient for a bit. This back and forth with it being hot or cold is to manipulate and confuse people. All while knowing people will chop it up as poor English. I have shown that this isn't the first time he played with the flip-flopping of words to manipulate people. It's just like last time when he called the patch on her arm scabies, to a scab and then back to scabies. How can that 5 seconds he took to rub the bottle make much of a difference in making the formula less warm or more cool? I'm sure as shit that it didn't do anything. Or maybe he's really just mixing up the extra ingredient that we can't see. He then says, sit close to the heating ball to keep Ellie warm. So now it's a heating ball and not the correct word like he said earlier, by calling it a heating lamp. Serenity now, please. Her belly was full before he even gave her this bottle. So why is he even giving it to her? That just makes the fact that he's giving this bottle to her a bit more suspicious. Is the invisible ingredient in play here? He says, Ellie drank one bottle of milk but her stomach was full. 
How the hell can rubbing and patting her stomach like that while drinking a bottle benefit her? Stop it. So she even had food in her pouch, she's chewing, but struggling to keep her eyes open suddenly. Are you kidding me? Now they bring in a blanket. In part 3, I discussed how he once showed beautiful shots on his travels to later chose to show less flattering things to appear poor. Well, now I will like to show you a great comparison of when he showed nice things to when he did the opposite. In fact, the video where he shows nicer things was actually removed from all to see. But the video where he shows less flattering things was never taken down. Ask yourself why that is. Ask yourself why he would take down a rather pleasant video. Let's compare. I'll point out what I see differs between the two. Keep in mind the first video with the better shots is in the early stages of his channel. The less flattering video comes much later. He has the music going so I'll be muting. Look at the beautiful scenery. I would love to wake up to that every morning. Heck, even the drive seems really pleasant. No one else is on the road. You can take your time and enjoy the sights. This even looks like a place I would gladly visit. I've seen in other places their markets, and this place actually doesn't look bad. I'm impressed. I will never understand why these people choose to exploit these animals when they could easily travel within their own country and show us things there. Like this here market with all the different fruits and veggies that we don't have in our side of the world. It wouldn't take much effort, and no animals would have to suffer, and many people would be interested in seeing these things. I certainly couldn't tell you what a lot of that produce is. It would have been better had they filmed the different kinds by taking a few seconds to film each one. If he wanted to give a little bit of something extra he could have gave us the name of them and maybe a little description on what they're like. What I notice in this trip to the market, is that he's not being so pick and choosy. He confidently gets what he wants. He's not making a performance of it by acting like he must be careful in what he buys. It doesn't appear to me that he is concerned about prices either. I believe he has this video slightly sped up which may be why he played music over it. I don't think Ellie is really tearing into the fruit that fast. Now let's compare this video with the next video. He chooses to film this alley and once we can actually see the beautiful scenery there's a cut in the video. 
This is completely strategic. I think he may have even decided to take this path for this very reason. To some people this place may look awful and see it as horrendous living. But to me, this looks like country living and I don't see that much wrong with it. These people are very self-sufficient. I bet a lot of these residences have people who are very hardworking and good at crafting things using only the things they have in ways that are absolutely genius. Even Ellie's owner has showed multiple times that he himself is crafty. This is a lifestyle. Much like building your own cabin in the woods, making your own tools, growing your own food. This is very much a farming community that he's choosing to make look like he's suffering in poverty. Did you notice that cut before showing Ellie? As soon as the beautiful mountains can be seen, poof. Now let's look at when they show us their location again. If you're noticing these cuts in the video, they are not my own. I do believe they're purposely avoiding showing things that are appealing, such as those mountains. I skipped a little ahead. All the different food there and he's choosing noodles. Nothing wrong with noodles but we all know how cheap noodles are. But he insists on looking as though all his money is going into buying her formula. By the time of this video he had already got that $200 worth of donations and was monetized and making good money. This is performative in my opinion. He doesn't give her fruit or a veggies. He instead gives something that looks like junk food. Certainly not something she should eat. Yet, there's clearly better and healthier options within this market. Thanks all for watching. I'll for sure be diving into these vet visits in the next video.